Stand with me. It's our custom out of reverence to God's word. And turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastics, Old Testament. And turn with me to chapter 3. Everyone standing, kids and all that are able, as we get ready to approach the holy God once again. And turn with me, my God, to Ecclesiastics 3, starting at verse number 1. Everyone standing, everyone standing, everybody settled. My God, amen. When you have it, say amen. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, and the Word of God says, For everything there is uh, a season, a time for every activity, church, under heaven. Verse 2 says, A time to be born and a time to die. Oh, my God, I know we don't want to, but we have to. Mm. A time to plant and a time to harvest. So just because you plant it don't mean it's going to harvest overnight. Come on, somebody. It's a time for everything. Verse 3 says, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance. Verse 5 says, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away. Uh-oh. You got to let them go sometime. Uh, you might have to let her go. I'm just, don't y'all go do that now. Blame it on me. Mm. There's a time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to turn and a time to mend, church. Uh, I want y'all to realize what they're saying. Yeah, we have an obligation to fix some things that we tore up. If you know you tore it up, then be having a, have a desire to fix it. That's what the book says. It's a time, my God, to turn the time to men. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you, Lord. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. Help us, Lord. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the privilege to approach your holy word. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Speak. Get me out of the way so that you can get in the way. Loose me. Give me the freedom, Lord, to share only what needs to be shared in the time frame that you want it shared. Keep me disciplined before the people. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Come on, saints of God, and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm excited about this series. I'm getting ready to start. I knew I wasn't going to be able to get going, but I'm going to lay as much foundation as I can, and I'm excited. When asked, how are you doing? I heard some people respond with, <laughs> I'm shifting into a new season. I think that sometimes people are saying, really, y'all, my life is falling apart and I don't know what's going on mm. of course we won't want to admit that though but transition is a vital and expected part of life everything church is in a constant state of transition I'm heavy now so y'all need to flow with me heavy not heavy being weighted down but heavy with a word that's going to provoke and challenge your theology. So I'm going to go back and read that again because I caught that in the spirit. Everything, look at your neighbor and say everything, is in, const in a constant state of transition. Mm. You're going to get old, keep living. Yeah, you're going to start hurting sooner or later. You ain't going to get out that bed as easy as you get out of it now. As the old folks say, keep living. Uh, you asking me why I'm always moaning? <laughs> keep living. Uh, I can't get nobody mm, right there. Mm. So we need, church, we need to know how to navigate through times of transition with peaceful grace and dignity. It's a purpose for the message. God moves in seasons. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 3.18 that we are transitioning into Christ's image from glory to glory. Jeremiah told the nation of Moab that unlike Israel, they have not transitioned from vessel to vessel. And therefore retained a sinful, watch me now, taste 
and sin before God. Whew. Retained a sinful sin. If I taught y'all, how's your aroma this afternoon? What type of aura are you giving off? Mm. When people get close to you uh, and begin to bump you and squeeze you and rub up against you, my God, uh, what are they getting in return? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What type of scent mm, are you giving off when you're squeezed, when you're dropped in the trials of life, when you're facing circumstances and, di and difficult situations, my God, what type of aroma, uh, what type of attitude, what type of words come up out of your vessel mm, when you're in the midst of the fire? Am I talking to the right crowd so far? Transitions are hard times. Yeah, it is. Uh, they force us from one familiar. They force us from familiar unto unfamiliar, unto unknown. That's why we don't like transitions. We get stuck in the familiar and we don't want to let go. Am I with you this morning afternoon, church? Mm -hmm. Often we go kicking and screaming, but in the end we still go whether we like it or not. Uh huh. I think people know that transition will cost them something. Uh, can I help you? When God is trying to break us from chaos, see, people have learned in the body of Christ how to manage. Oh my God, chaos. Learned how to manage chaos. I'm going to say it again. People in the body of Christ, and I'm still in the introduction, has learned how to manage. I'm going to even take it past manage. Exist in chaos. And when God sent someone to disrupt, <laughs> oh, my God, and challenge, my God, the chaos, oh, my God, we go kicking and screaming and fighting. Because we are comfortable managing chaos. Some of that has to do with cause the fear of knowing what the, we're not knowing the future. So we know what this chaos consists of. We know about this familiar place that we've been operating in for quite some time. And so to get me to leave that and go to her, and you don't know where you're taking me, and I don't know where I'm going, uh, I'm kicking and screaming. Well, I'm going somewhere, I promise you. So it's easier for some of us to manage chaos because moving into the future, moving into the unknown, gonna cost you something. You know what it's gonna cost you? Your control. Because when you manage chaos, you can control that. <laughs> oh, but when you're walking with God and you're going from glory to glory, you can't control God. You got to trust God. I can't get nobody. I'm uh, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm coming. I'm coming. Yes, Lord. Mm. Yes, Lord. I give God the glory. I give God the glory. I give God the glory. Therefore, we want to remain in the old seasons because transition is hard. Mm -hmm. Every transition has a time of ending, ending, a time of chaos and a time of new beginnings. All three stages are challenging, y'all. The time of ending, the time of chaos, and the time of new beginnings. Don't you know new beginnings are challenging? Do you know the price that those young students that just graduated, my God, when they stepped on campus and went to school as a freshman and all the fear uh, of wondering, am I, am I, am I, am I, am I ever, ever going to graduate? My God, all the challenges that they had, my God, for their new beginning. As I told you, all three stages, my God, is, it's a war. It's a war. It's a war. It's a war. I promise you. Mm. So I want to talk to you about thriving thank you Holy Ghost I have to adjust and adapt with the microphone y'all know I'm used to teaching with my lapel something went wrong it's all good but the title of the sermon is learning to I mean thriving in new seasons this church is in a new season we have transitioned from 3434 South Garnett to 205 South Sheridan. My God. So when you think about thriving, my God, and if you have shifted on your job, if you have shifted, my God, in your relationship, if you have shifted to the new church, my God, if things are beginning to, my God, shift in your life, ask yourself a simple question. How am I responding to the new shift, to the new season, to the new beginning, to the new process? Something that God has brought in my life to bless me has it turned out to curse me because I didn't adjust and adapt to the new season. Mm. So ask yourself, am I thriving in this season in my life? 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, my God, point number one is, let's look at some benefits. Mm, boy, I wish my lapel would work. Let's look at some benefits of a season. Are y'all ready? Write that down. The benefits of a season. According to Philippians 3.13, no, Paul said, my dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. There's no way that you can thrive in a new season, a new beginning, my God, if you're constantly looking back. If you're constantly holding on to the past. If you're constantly, my God, allowing your past to remind you that, uh, that you are not qualified. Uh, uh, if you could constantly allow your past to tell you that you're not kings, that you're not queen. Paul said, I forget all that stuff. All my accomplishments, all of my achievements, everything, all of my successes, Minister Christian. Paul said, don't none of that matter. My God, can I tell you, in order for you to thrive in a new season, you're going to have to let go of your past. Oh, my God, you'll never be able to embrace. Oh, my God, you will never be able to walk into, my God, your new beginning, your new season, my God, until you let go of your mistakes, until you let go of your failures, until you say, okay, it is what it is, my God, but I'm going on to see what the end of a saved life is going to be like, my God. I got to thrive in this season, my God. Something that God brought in my life to bless me, I'm not going to allow my past to curse me. Come on, somebody. Oh. Oh, I'm going somewhere. Here's one of the problems of uh, uh, believers. Now, I'm talking to the body of Christ today. Uh, we often opt uh, for comfort over convenience. Uh, we choose comfort over convenience. You, uh, show me in the scripture uh, what God called the body to a comfortable walk. Uh, when God called you, when he selected his 12, he completely disrupted their whole life. <laughs> they were fishermen. They could manage the boat. My God, they knew how to fish. That's what they did. That was their occupation. But when God said, Peter, come follow me. Andrew, come follow me. My God, he completely disrupted all that they knew. See, a lot of us, my God, find it very grievous to thrive in a new season. My God, when God called you out of the world because you want to hold on to the world instead of hold on to God. Oh, you got to let one of them go, baby. Choose this day whom you're going to serve, baby. Life or death or blessing or cursing. My God, when, call, when God said, Peter, come, Peter had to leave the boat comfortable and move into the unknown. See, so therefore, if you choose, my God, who, my God, to stay where it's comfortable at, my God, then, then you're going to be frustrated in a season. Because when you're going from faith to faith to glory to glory, uh, you're going to have some challenges. You're going to have some ups and downs. you got to deal with some crisis, my God. you got to deal with some circumstances and situations. But if you understand, oh, my God, that you don't have crisis, that you have opportunities, my God, to grow, to develop, my God, to advance God's kingdom, then that very thing that's grieving you will begin to bless you because now you have a different outlook about what you're going through. Remember the title of the sermon is thriving in new seasons. How are you doing since you transitioned from 34 to 34? Can I keep it on a dollar? It has disrupted a whole lot of people because you got a lot of people with small-minded mentalities, my God. They want to they stay 150 people, my God. They don't want God to enlarge their capacity. They don't want God to expand, my, ooh, my God. That would, mm, they don't want God to expand their territory. And so they begin to sabotage. Some people can't handle growth. Some people can't handle seasons. Some people can't handle transitions, my God. Because they want to manage that, what they call familiar. Everybody can handle it. My father taught me, you always lose some in a season, in a transition. Because some people want to stay comfortable. Some people are terrified of a campus. Give me one bathroom and let me wait, my God, for that person to come out so I can go in. But you give me three, now I got to make a decision. And now I'm confused because I got an option. Some people, my God, oh my God, y'all need to stay. Oh my God. Some people don't know how to operate without options. When you give them options, they get confused. Or you give them something different, they get confused. You tell them that you ain't got to use that one, you can use another one, you can get for few. You don't have to always drive down that same street, you can drive down another street. They get confused. Everybody can't handle options. And so, my God, it terrifies us so what they do. They back up and retreat and stay comfortable, stay in the familiar, thriving in a new season. We choose comf being comfortable. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, my God, help me, Lord. We must understand that nothing, church, is permanent except God and his promises. Oh, I'm going to mess with your theology. Nothing is permanent. The only thing that's permanent in this world is the promises of God. The Bible says heaven and earth is going to pass away, and the only thing going to remain is this right here. 
And so can I tell you, my God, other than this, if you come into the world, you will die. That's permanent. If the Lord don't come back first. But other than that, the only thing is permanent, church, stay with me, is the promises of God. And so if you really understand that, my God, who oh my God, then you and I, I and you must build our lives on the word of God. It is the only thing that's going to sustain you and I. It's the only thing that we can, my God, take it to the bank and cash it is the word of God. And so you and I have to understand that don't nothing remain the same but the promises of God. And so as we taught in foundation class, my God, the importance of opening up God's word. God's word gives you life. So every time you open up the word of God, you are choosing to eat and drink life. My God, the Bible says in the book of John, my God, as I read to the class, my God, that the word of God gives life to everything. That the word of God gives life to everything. And so, therefore, if you are not reading your word, you are not receiving life. I don't care how much you pray. My God, you have to mix prayer with, mm, with the word of God because the word of God gives life. Stay with me, John. God's, the gospel, the word of God gives life to everything that exists. That's what the word of God say. So, if the word of God gives life to everything that exists, I, I exist. And so if I want life, I need to be feeding myself on life. The word of God is life. I'm redundant and it's simplistic, but my God, but how many of you are feeding yourself life instead of death? The only thing that gives life is the word of God. The only thing, my God, that is permanent is the word of God, which is the promises of God. Mm, mm, mm. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm thriving in a new season. And so you won't be able to thrive in a new season if you try to manage an old season. You can't bring a new, uh, you can't bring an old season into a new season. Oh, you got to let it go. That's the Bible says, my God, something got to die. Oh, my God, that's why when they crossed the Red Sea, that was supposed to die, died, and that was supposed to come up, came up on the other side. You didn't brought too much death over to the other side when it should have died on the other side of the Red Sea. Oh, you can't bring death into a new season. You can't bring old into a new season. You can't bring old mindsets into a new season. Jesus said, I can't give you new wine because you got too many old mindsets. I can't give you no new idea because you want the old. I can't give you new, my God, creative thing because you're too stuck in the institution of what used to be. Some people can't adjust and adapt to change. They always want the same old songs, the same old, same old, sit in the same old seat, pork in the same old spot. Old mindset. I'm trying to shift the church so that we can begin to embrace this new season. So that you won't just be in the season, but you will begin to thrive in the season. And so what you should have learned already, my God, that nothing is as permanent but the word of God. Here's another thing that you should have learned. That you cannot bring, my God, an old mindset into a new season. Uh-oh. You can't bring old wounds into a new fresh relationship. If you bring in old wounds, old situations, old pain, old hurt into a fresh relationship, you have already contaminated and disqualified yourself. Now, he or she is dealing with something that they didn't even cause because you brought the old into the new. You're crying out for something new. God said, I'm giving you a fresh relationship. And all you did is bring the old, the chaos into the new. And now you're not thriving when you should be thriving. Somebody give God a hand for me. As the scripture stated, church, everything, my God, to everything, there is a season. That statement comes with a promise. God promised you and I that everything has a season. You just read it, three, one through eight. Everything has a season. We had a season at 34, 34. That season came to an end, and now we had a new season at 205 South. Sure. We had started out, my God, at the Rudisell Library, owned the 3434, 34, and now we're here. Oh, my God, seasons change seasons change are you adjusting and adapting to the seasons in your life don't you know it could be summertime springtime or winter in your life it could be springtime summertime but winter in your life when you think about when you're thinking cold and bitter mm, come on somebody so adjust and adapt your mind to understand that there's a season everything ain't gonna always be painful you're not going to always be going through trials and tribulations. You shouldn't always be in hardship. You shouldn't always, disciples, be struggling financially. You shouldn't always 
be dealing with the same hang-ups and habits and sins when you came to the Lord. That season should have died somewhere along the process of going from faith to faith to glory to glory. Some things God do immediately, other things he takes you on a process. But you should not be dragging 20 years of hang-ups and habits with you in this season in your life. Some of us, truth be told, is too old to be dealing with some of the stuff that we're dealing with. Yeah, yeah. God promises you and I that there's a season, there's a time to everything. It doesn't matter what happens in life, y'all. It must change. It must change. Nothing, write this down, nothing remains the same. Nothing remains the same. For those that's holding your little grandbaby, she or he will not always be in your arms. Uh-huh. That baby's going to grow up one day. And the same baby, you say, ooh, goo, goo, ga, ga, goo, goo, you just, uh, you're going to be like, somebody pray for my baby. This boy here is driving me crazy. This girl here, Amber, come get this girl before I lose my mind. Oh, but you goo goo ga ga ga. Things change. So what am I trying to get you to understand? Let go of your control and understand that nothing is permanent. You're not going to always stay at ORU. You just graduated. I know you probably would like to. Well, I guess because it costs a lot of money to go to school. You might say that season needs to end. Come on, somebody. So you have to embrace and understand, my God, that things change. Uh, people get frustrated when they try to, my God, uh, 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 make something out of an institution. Ooh, I'm heavy. When you think about an institution, you be, a lot of us got memorials built up in our mind. See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore, anything that God may be using, anybody that God may be using to challenge and try to knock down that memorial or that institution, you God. Because all your life evolves around that institution that you built up in your mind. And a lot of it is deception. The very walls that we put up to protect somebody has imprisoned you. I'm going to say that again. The walls you put up, because I don't want nobody to hurt me. I've been hurting in church. I got church hurt. My God, every time I let somebody get close to me, my God, they hurt me. And so I put walls up, and now I'm in prison to the very walls that I put up. Oh, uh, my God, you're supposed to be keeping the enemy out, but you didn't keep yourself in. Now God can't do nothing. You have built an institution that has imprisoned you. And so now you are in a new season. You're at a new time. You're at a new place. My God, and everybody ain't even happy that they're here. Because they tried to bring that to her. And I told y'all, and the woman of God said, that over there don't work her. And so we see it. She see it, I see it, and it's okay. That's just how God works, Christian and Amber. That's just how he works. God knows in each season who to bring and what to bring. Y'all better stay with me, church, because I'm teaching you. You might God, so you got to be open. That's why you got to say, God, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. You and I have to constantly stay in the state, God, or whatever your will is, that's what I want. Whatever it look like, sound like, feel like, that's what I want, God. I want to be in your will. The perfect place and the safest place is in the will of the Father. You don't understand it all. I don't understand it all. But the safest place in your life and my life is in the will of the Father. I'd rather be in the will of the Father than any, oh my God, than any other place in the world. Let me be in the will of the Father. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the the house of the Lord didn't live in a tent with wicked My people. I can't get in. the safest places in His will. I thank God for exposure in the Genesis of 205 South Sheridan. That means we ain't got to waste time. Come on, somebody, look at your name and say nothing remains the same. So what you got to do? You got to quit holding on to that institution. Quit holding on to the familiar. Quit holding on to that stuff. Don't you know, my God, some of us right now, thank you, Holy Ghost, some of us is holding on to stuff that's causing us so much pain. We holding on to people that's causing us so much pain. Come on. And so therefore we crying out, we running to the altar, we saying sister, we saying brother, my God, but then yet God has already told you to make a decision, but you choose not to make one. Holding on to the familiar. And when you and I, I and you choose to do that, all it does is produce frustration in a new season. Mm, mm, mm. 
Write this down up on the point number one. Seasons guarantee change. Woo, seasons guarantee change. Change is always happening. There's going to be summer, there's going to be spring, there's going to be winter, there's going to be fall. Those are four, four seasons right there. But see, this is where the wisdom come in at of applying the word to your life. Because like I told y'all, you could be, it could be summer in the natural, but you could be in the fall in your spirit. And see, you got to be able to adjust, my God, to whatever season you're in in life. Come on. Because if you don't adjust, my God, my God, the very thing that, like I said, has come to bless you is now cursing you. My God, there's benefits to new season. There's benefits to change, my God. You got to change with the seasons. Oh, my God, you got to change with the seasons. There's benefits that when you adjust and adapt to a new season. Are you with me so far? And I promise you, there's many people right now frustrated. Because they have not adjusted and adapted to the new season. I'm not talking about coming to 205 South Sheridan. That's part of it too. I'm talking about the seasons in your life. So you and I got to begin to pray, God, show me what season I'm in in the spiritual realm. Oh, my God, show me, God, what season I'm in so I can begin to adjust and adapt so I can thrive in that season instead of becoming a victim of that season. Mm, 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 mm. The key to life, my God, let me help you with something, is to outlast different seasons. That you would encounter in life. The key to life. One of the key to life is to outlast. You got to be willing to outlast things that you're going through. That's why I tell y'all you got to be built forward tough. Oh my God. Oh my God. This thing has come. My God to try to kill you. But you got to tell yourself I'm going to outlast you though. My God. Sooner or later. That what you're going through. My God. That what you're experiencing. That what you are vexing. My God. If you just keep on living. If you just keep on showing up. If you just keep on praying. If you just keep on believing. My God. Sooner or later. My God. You're going to outlive and outlast. Oh that trial of tribulation. My God. That's all up and down your back. Turned up and disrupting your life. Sooner or later. My God. If you just keep on praying. Your children going to outlast those crisis my God there's really opportunities my God in their life sometimes you got to just keep on keeping on as the old saints say I'm keeping on and I'm keeping on mm. yes you are our last the seasons if you're going through something right now stand up keep reading keep praying keep believing stay in faith keep trusting my God quit quitting on God outlast the seasons Oh, my God, our last, my God, are you built for it tough? My God, we shout about we don't do church, we do Christ. But can I tell you, God showed me a lot of people that say we don't do church, we do Christ. is really doing church. I'm sorry, did I say that? We don't do church, we do Christ. And half of the people are shouting. If you ain't, then I ain't talking to you. But if you are, I am talking to you. Outlast the different seasons that you're in. If you're in a trouble, turbulence in season, outlast it. Don't quit. You know how many people are letting circumstances, situations cause them to self-sabotage and abort their purpose and abort the process? The very thing that you're praying and asking God to do in your life, he allows a situation to come and you don't outlast it. You quit. You tap out. And God said that, I, that was the vehicle. That was the key. That was the circumstance. That was the situation, my God, to propel you to your next season and you missed it. Many people are missing, thank you, woman of God. Many people are missing their seasons, my God, because they mishandling the things that God is using to push you to another level, to push you to another season. Because we want everything to be comfortable. We want everything to be convenient. We don't want no trouble, but we want everything from God. But I come to tell you, my God, that our blessed is the man who suffered persecution for righteousness' sake. It was good for me that I was afflicted, my God. You got to be willing to go through something, my God, to get something in God. Oh, my God, quit mishandling and squandering the thing that God is trying to use to bless you. You're not thriving, my God, because you want the old. You're not thriving because you want to stay in the familiar. You're not thriving because you want to be comfortable. You don't want to be inconvenient. You don't want nobody to upset nothing that you got going on in your life. You have built walls that has imprisoned you, my God. You're keeping people out that God is trying to bring in. Oh, my God, you're running away from situations that God is trying to use. And then you want to talk about how things work together for the good God. Say, ah, uh, you're aborting the process. The things that they're using, you're turning against him instead of for you. Because mm. nothing stays the same. You must prepare in one season for the next. Sister Tanya talked about it. Oh, my God, at the 34 and 34, when you had the 10 virgins, my God, the 10 widows. One had five of them had oil. They was ready. And another five, my God, they, 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 they act like they had already heard job well done. Oh, my God, they was living 
uh, irresponsible. They didn't come prepared. But those other five came prepared. And when the king showed up, my God, they stepped in. Oh, my God, I hate, my God, I don't want to see it happen, my God. But I hope the door, my God, don't catch you on the other side when he closes it. I hope that when he come knocking, my God, that you're ready to stand before God and hear a job well done, my good and faithful son. I hope when that opportunity comes to move you to your next season, my God, you're ready to walk through. As I teach my sons and daughters, when God opened up a door, you got to walk through the door and own the door, baby. But are you ready to walk through the door that God is opening? You're praying that God do something for you, but are you preparing yourself for this next season? Are you preparing yourself for your promotion? Are you preparing yourself for your husband or your wife? Are you preparing yourself to advance, my God? When the opportunity open, are you ready for it? Are you still functioning the way you always function? Really in chaos. You got to own the doors. You got to prepare for a new season. Preparation is never time wasted. Growing in the dark and flipping in pages, my God, is sacrifice and lesson God to sanctify you and clean you up, my God. It's preparing you for another season. You can't bring all, we can't bring all this mess into a new season in our lives. I don't care what that season may look like. I don't care what that door may be. Are you preparing yourself for the thing you're asking God to do in your life? You want it so bad. You even sow and seed. But are you preparing for that which you are asking God to do in your life? Because we understand that seasons change and that in order to go to a new season, I got to prepare. I got to plan. The, the late doctor said, while you sleeping, I'm studying. While you sleeping, I'm praying. While you sleeping, I'm preparing. Because I understand seasons change. Are you preparing for your season? Are you preparing for your next season? I want y'all to thrive in the office of minister of music that's going on for Christ Church. So that's preparation. Whatever you had at other places, won't work here. Fresh start. Fresh mama. Fresh revelation. Who, as I taught the church, my God, the class this morning. See, you got two type of ways to receive from God. You got communicated knowledge with someone like myself is speaking to you. So you, I'm communicating with you. And then you got revealed knowledge that comes straight from the altar. See, that what is communicated is, my God, can, can, can end up with deception. When you, when you receive a communicated knowledge from another vessel, another person, my God, it can be polluted. It can be contaminated. Uh, because how many know that when, when, when if I tell her something, she go tell him something, he go tell her. You know, see, now it's, this, it's contaminated. Oh, my God, but when you come down here, oh, my God, and you get it off the altar. Well, if you get it in Revelation, come on, somebody. If you get it because you're spending time with God, oh, my, you getting it straight, my God, from heaven, my God. Ain't no strange fire attached to it. My God, that's revealed revelation. Many people only receive communicated revelation. And that's okay. That's okay, but you need to get to the point where you mature, where you get spiritual revelation straight from the throne of heaven. Because it ain't defiled. It's not no deception in it. Are you listening to me? When you get it straight from the throne. But you got to be prepared. Don't you know that part of receiving what God has for you has everything to do, and it ain't got to do with your position in the natural, how you sit. How you pop, some of us look so dignified. We sit real proper. We sit real polite. But that ain't got nothing to do with being in a position to receive. Oh, my God. Fresh revelation. Everything has to do, my God, with the position of your mindset. We want everything. But God said, I can't give you new revelation. You got too much old in you. You got an institution, my God, that you think is truth, but it ain't truth. I'm like, you got a belief system, my God, that you think is biblical that it ain't biblical. You've been told stuff that you have made an institution that ain't even truth. And so I'm trying to give you stuff. I'm trying to tear that stuff down. But you hold it on to it. You, you won't let it go. You're protecting it even from the spirit of the living God. God is trying to go up into the attic of our mind and renovate our mind. And every time the spirit go up, we knock it down. Every time the spirit try to clean up, my God, uh, we knock it down, my God. Oh, God, I don't want that. God, you sure that's you. A lot of us is talking ourselves out of new seasons. Talking ourselves out of fresh beginnings. Talking ourselves out of them businesses that live on the inside of you. Talking yourself out because you're scared. Can I help you? I'm scared. I don't know what the future holds for 205 South Shirty. But as I taught y'all, you can't let your fear paralyze you. 
where you stop moving. You stop believing. You got to still trust God when you can't trace God. You still, he, all you got to do is say, okay, I'm going to strive to live right. And the Bible said the steps of a good man, no gender, is ordered by the Lord. If you don't know, just follow. Uh, do what he told you the last time. But how do you know if I'm doing what it? You, that's why you got to get on the altar so you can find out the direction that you're going that is God. Because some of us are going in the direction God didn't tell us to go. And we're frustrated in the season. It's okay to pause and say lie. I say, okay, oh my God, this ain't been working. Oh my God, I'm going to finish in a minute. This ain't working. I need to back up and regroup. I need to adjust and adapt. My God, I started out, my God, and I had some, I had some, uh, some fruit. But now I look back and it used to come easy, my God. God had grace and mercy on him, but now, my God, it's a drudgery. It's a fight. It's a war. Yeah, my God may be telling you that season is up. The grace has lifted. The cloud has moved on. The fire has shifted, my God. And you still working, my God. God said, I'm over here and, and you still right here. You got to know what season you're in. Mm, mm, mm. When you try to hold on to something... Understand that seasons change. It may be good for the first three months, and then the season may turn. It may be turbulence the next four months. But if you prepare yourself in one season for the next, when it's good, Job said, told his wife, oh, foolish woman, said we only serve God when it's good and not when it's bad. You got to prepare for the bad times and the good times, man. While you jumping and shouting and driving and flossing and doing all that, we have the enemy said, okay, I'm just waiting for the right time. Because if you're jumping and, fo- if you're jumping and shouting and you're flossing and you ain't spending no time in God's word, you're not anchoring yourself in the dark, the devil's just waiting for a right opportunity, my God, ah, to attack you, my God. Oh, my God, and then he's going to make a public specter of you. I thought he was going hard. I thought she was going hard. Oh, uh, my God, you got to prepare, my God, for another season. Uh, don't let the blessings of the Lord, my God, allure you to sleep. Huh? Don't let the favor of God cause you to become slowful and lazy. Don't start mismanaging, my God, the gifts and talents that God has given you when God starts blessing you. When you went hard when you didn't have none, you better go hard when you get something. If you prayed when you didn't have none, you better pray when you get something. Don't get caught slipping, baby. I didn't talk y'all that. Uh, many of you, God didn't bless you. And you don't read. You don't come to church like you used to. You don't pray like you used to. You won't forgive nobody. You intoxicated off the blessings, my God. And devil said, I'm waiting for the right opportunity. And I'm going to make a mockery. He or she thought they got away, but I'm just waiting for that opportunity to get them. You better stay grounded. You better stay rooted. Blessed is the man who hungry and thirsts after righteousness. You better stay hungry. Don't get caught slipping. Somebody give God a shout. Come on. I know you don't like it. I'm looking at you. It's all good, but walk my words. Uh, you're going to be calling me soon. to my pastor, I warned you. The Bible says that God get warning before destruction. Oh, my God, you better hear me sitting up pretty powerful, my God. You better hear me. It's the reason why God dropped it in my spirit, because some of y'all need a warning. You got intoxicated off of what God has done for you. You're no longer hungry. You're no longer thirsty. You think you're going to always have that. You think God going to always do that. You think God going to always bless you. You have made an institution. You are out of everything that God has blessed you with. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Because when God trying to break you, he's going to send a storm. When God trying to break you, he's going to send a storm. Y'all better listen to me. Get too comfortable. Oh, I ain't never dealt with that. I ain't never dealt with that. I'm good. My bills is paid. I'm rolling like I want to roll. I'm dressing the way I want to dress. I'm doing the things I want to do. My God, that ain't my story. How soon we forget. God said, okay. God says, okay. And guess what? Satan says, okay. Don't you know that Satan can bless you too? He can give you houses, cars, and land just like God can. But the only difference is balance that God gives you without pain and suffering. Uh, there is no, oh my God, there's no suffering attached to what God do for you. Oh my God. Oh, don't get me started. When God bless you, my God, it comes easy. When God bless you, you thrive in a new season. When God bless you, my God, favor just track you down. Money just track you down. Doors just open up for you. Opportunity just open up for you. You get new offices just to begin it. Things begin to happen. God said, I'm going to bless them because they've been faithful. I'm going to bless them because they've been faithful. How they going to pay for that? God had already paid for it. I can't get nobody and say nothing right there. Don't worry about how you're going to do it. God going to do it. Uh, if you could do it, then it wouldn't be God. God will put you in situations because if you could do it, then you will get the glory. But if God put you somewhere and you can't do it, God going to get the glory. Hey, my God. Let God put you in places that you, how am I going to pay for that? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? God said, I got it. I got it. Because everything that he does, Dad, he wants the glory. Thank you, Lord, for rocking the body. I'm going to give you one more and get you out of here. 
Yes, Lord. Don't hold on to that season. Understand that when it's good, give God the glory and prepare yourself for when it get bad because it's going to get bad. That's all I'm trying to do is teach you. I promise you it ain't going to always be good. Oh, my God. Thank you, Holy God. Just coach you, Pastor. Oh, my God. You in that season. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's been good for a long time. <laughs> oh, now it's time to go. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Just adjust and adapt. Just adjust and adapt. It's okay, Brian and Star. It's okay. New season. Oh, my God. Let me go just a little bit deeper and I'm going to get out your way. Oh, uh, my God. You got to understand that seasons are always moving. Seasons are, seasons are also always temporary. When it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it's bad. When it's cold, it's cold. When it's hot, it's hot. Come on, when it's tight, it's tight. When he acting right, he acting right. When she ain't acting right, she ain't acting right. Seasons. Oh, Amber. Oh, <laughs> I like to make praise be to God. Come on, let's give God a hand for Chris and Amber. They get ready to get married. Amen. Yes, Lord. Uh. Let me give you this and I'm going to be through. We must stay still and never react when you're dealing with a season of turbulence. Boy, I'm giving you principles. Stay still. That's why when I teach the ministry, you can't go off the, exp- uh, off the response and the reaction of the people to think that you're being effective. If don't nobody never say amen, as quiet as a church house mouth, that does not mean that you're not effective at what God is having you do. That can confuse your people. If you stand for preaching and you don't see no reaction, you think you're being ineffective. Uh, I used to think like that, but as I begin to grow, I understand, my God. My, a lot of emotionalism don't mean that God is speaking. People think, oh, my God, people think, and some people preach for emotionalism because they think that if it's hype, that means God has showed up. Don't you know the devil will create noise to bring distractions? Ooh, he will create a lot of noise. So nobody won't get no importation from the spirit. So I got to create noise. Phone got to go off. Baby start crying. Uh, husband elbow you. Uh, come on. Uh, distractions. Let me get ready to close. Is God helping anybody so far? Come on, y'all talk to me, church. Come on, talk to me. Write this down because I know I got a lot of note takers. Seasons moves us closer to God and our purpose in life. Different seasons moves you closer to God. You should be much more closer to your purpose if you know what that is. If you don't know what that is, you should be signed up for discipleship so God can begin to reveal to you what your purpose is. But this season, thank you, Holy Ghost. Brother William, I see you. This season that you're in, and you know what I'm talking about. Let that season, son, move you closer to God. Let that season son move you when I'm closer to purpose. Every season should move you farther. Every season, new season to take you up higher. Y'all watch me as I go up. My God. I'm in this season but when I step to this next stage that's another season. Another season. Another season. You could call it another level. You can call it what you want. But every time God do it it should promote you to a new season. But if you don't prepare on the bottom for the top, when you get to the top you're going to be exposed. If you don't prepare on the bottom for the top, when you get to the top, you're going to be exposed. When God, my God, you know the blessings of the Lord can expose you? When God begin to bless you, it expose your heart. What is your heart, your mindset, and what you really believe? Who's sitting on the throne with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Uh, what is Lord? What is competing for your, your who, who's competing for your, your Lordship other than the Spirit of the living God? See, the blessings will expose too. Don't you know God will bless you? He will, God will bless you. To show you. Because he loves you enough. He said, if I don't expose it now, if they get all the way up here, they're going to be damaged goods. So I got to deal with them now. So he'll allow you to come up a little bit. That's the sovereignty of God. That's the, that's the wheel in the middle of a wheel. That's because God knows what's best for you and I. We don't understand God's will. We don't understand all of God's will. But God knows what's best. He know when to send you to a trial and when to snatch you out of a trial. He know when to bless you and when not to bless you. He know when to open up the heavens and when to withhold the heavens for you. That's why you got to be able to trust God, church. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, I'm talking to myself this afternoon. Thank you. Oh, my God. And so, and so if we allow, my God, seasons that change to bless us, my God, you will look back. 
You will look back. Stay with me. Let me show down. You will look back if you allow the seasons that shift and change. If you look back. Back, my God, if you have progressed, if you adjust and adapt, if you are prepared for the new season, my God, you will get to a new season and you will begin to thrive. You will begin to flourish. You will be like oak trees of righteousness. Don't you know God is trying to place and plant? Oh, my God, Holy Ghost. God is trying to place and plant some of you so you can thrive. God need a light in the earth. God need a witness mother in the earth. You don't understand, and I don't understand why God got you in that job. I don't understand why God got you over her. I don't know why you moved in that house. I don't know, but God planted you there, my God, so he can expose the kingdom to somebody that may miss heaven. My God, he got you right where he wants you. Even if it's a detour, as I taught y'all, you're right in the wheel of the Father. Mm, 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 mm. Boy, I see it's a lot of agreement in the church today. Oh, my God. Mm. Mm. I'm, th- I'm finna close. Mm. Oh my God, we must stay rooted though, church. Ooh. We must stay rooted and grounded during seasons of change. Please write that down. We must stay rooted during se- rooted and grounded during seasons of change, our changing seasons, however you want to word it. And understand is what you and I see as a crisis, God sees as an opportunity. I taught y'all that. Because in the kingdom, there is no crisis. There's only opportunities. In the world, you may deal with some crisis, but in the kingdom, God got everything under control. Everything. Y'all look at me. I'm through. Everything that you're experiencing right now, God got everything under control right now. If you don't believe it, you won't thrive in a new season. But if you receive it, that would just feel like it's a curse. Will turn around and be a blessing to you. Because God got everything under control. In the midst of the changing seasons, in the midst of the shifting, my God, we, must contr- we, must, we are in control over our thoughts in those different seasons. You have to maintain control over your thoughts in different seasons. If it's summertime, you can't dress with winter clothes on. That means you knew that summer was... Every season, thank you, Holy Ghost, comes to an end. As I taught y'all, you got to prepare from one season to the next. Why do you got on shorts in the wintertime? Why do you got on a mink coat in the summertime? What that shows is that you did not prepare for the new season. And when people don't prepare, prepare, prepare for the season, they will not thrive. So what is God trying to say this afternoon now? Nothing is permanent but the promises of God. We all going to get old one day, hopefully. That good paying job you got. Any day, you can walk up off in there, and they can tell you we downsizing. And you've been there 35 years. Everything has always been secure. They have always gave you raises every two or three years. You got your window. You got your parking spot. You're very secure. You can manage. You know how to operate. You're flourishing. But you can go to work tomorrow, and God forbid, and they summons you and say, I need to talk to you. The CEO want to see you. You got two ways to react. You can get mad or you can do like God just taught you. Because as I say this, it's a reason why this specific word came to the people of God. Because God is trying to prepare you for the change that's coming. When it come, when it come, because it's coming. How it's come, because it's coming. Where it come from, it's coming. It should not rock you. It should prepare you to thrive. Because then you get to adjust. Then you get to adapt. So don't dismanage. Don't mismanage the new season. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God has quit. So now I have quit. With every head bow, let's go through the formality. You know we don't pump prime and big. At all at this church. But if you're here. 
and the change in seasons has got the best of you. You're not thriving. You're really frustrated, fearful. That's okay because we're human. Don't let nobody make you feel bad because you're dealing with an element of fear. I got fear. I just ain't paralyzed by it. But if you're frustrated in any capacity, my God, my God, even if you have transitioned from the old building to the new building, you just come, don't, you seem lost. You seem like, my God, I don't fit no more. Uh, like some people that I know that has told themselves, Pastor, don't, don't lose. Don't let me lose. Don't, don't lose me. Pastor, I mean, uh, uh, keep me revelant, my God. You know, oh, my God, y'all be surprised at the stuff I have to deal with. Uh, I said, how can I lose you if you stay connected? How can you get lost if you stay connected? See what I'm trying to say? Only the people that feel lost is the people that don't want to get connected. How can you feel lost if you're connected to something? You're not lost. You just got to find your spot. And you got to prepare for a new season. I'm talking to the church now. If you are trying to bring the old mindset, the old way of doing things, the old institution from 3434 to 205 South Sheridan, you will feel lost. Because you didn't prepare for the new season. Even though we were warned at the old church about God getting ready to show us who's really with us in the ministry. I'm sorry, mothers and fathers, but I got to pass to the church while I got a chance to do it. Because I might not get to see y'all tomorrow because I may be in heaven. So I want to give you an opportunity to be in heaven with me just in case the trumpet blow or the death angel strike. So if you're here this afternoon and you have never accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, won't you do God the honor? And go on home for Christ, the honor, and come down and give your life to Christ. Anybody who has never accepted Christ, first time, I want to know this God that you're talking about, Pastor. I want to experience this freedom. I want to thrive in this season, my God, in my life. Uh, you said, my God, I'm not living, I'm just existing. My God, if that's you, why don't you come? Why don't you come, 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 come? Come on, don't be scared. Don't be scared. So if you are here, but you know you're not thriving, Christians, you're frustrated in any capacity. Come. The altar is open. Come. If you need to adjust and adapt, if you have built the institution, my God, but oh who my God, you in prison and stuff. Why don't you just come? Why don't you just come? Why don't you just come? Mm. Lord, lease, loose your people. As I look over the congregation I know and you know please get up and come you know and you know that I know so come you may just need some revelation of the new season that you're in has God sent a warning because a new season is coming upon you and he's trying to get you ready he's trying to get you ready he's trying to get you ready for that season my God look at that baby my God. Mm. Your Look at me. Get up and come down. Come on. Come on. Come on. B grab a hand and come on. Help me know you are near. Yeah, your pastor won't let none of y'all sit. Oh, Let's go, Jesus, William. Jesus, yes. Thank you, Lord. You're all I want. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Oh, Learning to thrive in a new season. You're all Thank you, Lord. Adjusting and adapting to a new season. Mm. Are you You're a victim of a new season? Have you become a victim of a new season? Have you allowed circumstances to get on top of you instead of you being on top of your circumstances? <laughs> oh, my God, help your people, God. Uh, You're Lord. all Thank you, Lord. You are Thank you, Lord. Jesus. You are. Who, Jesus? You're all I've Those at the altar, come on, talk to God as I get ready to release you. Come on, you talk to Him. Jesus. I can't do it for you. Mm. Mm. Who, my God? Thank you, Lord. Increase the momentum, Lord. Increase the momentum, Lord. Help us, Lord. Who, my God? Touch Him, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Restore the joy. Restore my focus, Lord. Increase my prayer life. Increase my study life. Oh, my God. Help me to let go so you can get in. Remove, remove, remove. Ah, remove. Oh, my God.
my God, remove everything that's hindering me. Oh my God, roll away the stones that's blocking you from getting to me, God. Woo, thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, yes. Lord, I want to thrive. I want to thrive. I don't want to just survive. I want to thrive, God. Woo, Jesus. You're Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, Jesus. Lord, help your people. My God, it's all good. Strengthen your people, God. Thank you for the people of God. Thank you for the people of God. Ooh, thank you for the people of God. Ooh, Jesus. Mm. Ooh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Strength. Strength. Strength in the people of God. Woo, breathe on our marriages, Lord. My God. Woo, breathe on the marriages of going home for Christ Church, God. Lord, 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 breathe. Who on the marriages of going home for Christ Church? God. My God, thank you, Lord. Mm. Jesus. Jesus. Mm. Who, my God. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, forgive us for our sin. Lord, forgive us, Lord. Father God, forgive us. Forgive us for mishandling the seasons. Mm. Forgive us for allowing somebody else's voice to mean more than your voice. Forgive us, God. Father God, have mercy and break loose your people that's trapped in sexual sin. Mm. Unhealthy, contaminated relationships. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh my God. Break the chain, Lord. Break the yoke, Father God. Oh my God. Father, thank you, Lord. Touch every wife. Touch every husband father god is in this ministry oh my god under the sound of my voice and even those that's not her strengthen the marriages of this church father god mm, restore uh, the vibrant love increase the honor and respect one towards another in the ministry father god of marriage inside of going on for christ's church father help us to let go and forgive one another father god in the name of jesus bring the spirit of agreement back into the homes ah who my god bind up the witch bind up the warlocks bind up the demons uh, uh that has penetrated father god the homes uh, of the married couples in this church father god even in the midst of mine father god strengthen father god the institution of marriage between husband and wife inside the gates of going home for christ church father god in the name of jesus lord i thank you for the people of god responding to your voice bless those that did not make their way down but bless them father god because truth be told in the spirit none of us is above this word so father god as we stand before you in humility father god forgive us for self-righteousness forgive us because we have not always handled seasons the way we are supposed to handle so we need to forgive need you to forgive us for mismanaging and mishandling the seasons that you have brought to bless but we squandered them away father god forgive us for turning away from people that you wanted us to help Father God, there's so many reasons why we need your mercy, why we need your grace. Never allow us to think that we live above a word that is preached from heaven. Lord, in the name of Jesus, have mercy on the body of Christ. 
Everyone at the altar, grab your neighbor's hand as we pray and close out the service. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that nothing is more important than your voice in this church. Nothing is more important than the souls of the people that you came to die for. Thank you, Father God, I'm not dominated or controlled by the perception and the opinions of the people. Help us, Lord. We stand in need, Father God. Oh, my God, of you to sever away the sin, cut away the flesh, cut away the stuff that's interfering, Father God, and causing us to mismanage, Lord, the blessings of the Lord. Mm. So, Father God, bless my neighbor. The hands that I hold, Touch that person. Touch that woman. Touch that sister. Touch that daughter. Touch that child, Father God. Strengthen them, Father God. Let them leave about her revived. Oh, my God. Strengthen, Father God. Ready, Father God, to take on the world, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for teaching us how to adjust and adapt to a new season. Thank you for giving us some principles, Father God, on how, Father God, to allow your, the seasons to bless us instead of curse us, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, I pray that you expose any and everything, oh my God, in our hearts and in our lives that would interfere, Father God, for us embracing this new season that we're in, personally as well as spiritually in the church, Father God. I pronounce blessings upon your sons and daughters. I speak deliverance upon your sons and daughters. I speak healing upon your sons and daughters. And we receive it by faith, Father God. Oh my God, y'all talk to me. We receive it by faith. We receive our healing. We receive revelation, Lord. We receive strength for the journey father God we accept your sovereign will father God we got an eternal yes down on our soul father God we submit and we surrender to your ways father God we thank you that you loved us enough father God to give us an opportunity to get it right father God before the trumpet blow father God strengthen these warriors father God thank you for these kings and queens that's walked down here Lord thank you for their boldness to come forth father God and say I need some help right here I need a touch right here I need some wisdom by her. Thank you that they're not ashamed to come down, Father God. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, now restore every last one of us back to our rightful place with the Father. Forgive us for everything and anything, Father God. We accept you as our personal Lord and Savior. We believe, Father God, that you died. We believe that you, were, that you rose, Father God. We not only confess, but we believe. Oh, my God, in your darling son, Jesus Christ, Father, we ask that you come into our hearts and wash and forgive us of all of our sins. Cleanse our minds. Thank you, Father God, for breaking hang-ups and habits. Thank you for exposing wrong belief systems, Father God, that will keep you at a distance in our life. We come closer. We thank you for each season moving us closer to our purpose and our destiny, Father. Turn down and build back up, Lord. We are properly positioned in your kingdom. Now we got a real yes down in our soul. Somebody say with me, nevertheless. Come on, y'all say with me, nevertheless. Not my will, but thy will be done. Say with me, Father, thank you for Calvary. Father, my heart is open to receive new revelation, fresh wine creative ideas father renovate my mind knock down every institution that's keeping you out expose everything that makes you unhappy reveal everything that's grieving the spirit father and when you reveal I'll repent meaning I'll turn from in Jesus name and when you forgive me I will accept your forgiveness today I'm free today I'm restored today I'm healed today I don't look like what I've been through today I am victorious today I'm soaring today I have taken flight today I'm excited. Today, I'm ready. Today, do it for me. Shout to the Lord. Come on and shout to the Lord.